عندي 100 مليون عايز اعيشه اعمل ايه؟ الاثنين الا ربع دولت احتياجاتهم فين؟ احتياجاتهم من الغذاء، احتياجاتهم من السكن، احتياجاتهم من الصحه، احتياجاتهم من التعليم هو في الاخر المواطن عايز يا دكتور مصطفى؟ عايز يعيش وانا كمان عايزه يعيش احنا كمصريين عندنا طموح وعاوزين بلدنا تكبر وعاوزين بلدنا ما يبقاش عندها مشاكل وعاوزين احتياجاتنا كلها تبقى موجودة هنخرج من اللي احنا فيه للي احنا بنتمناه لنفسنا والبلدنا أنا كمسؤول عنكم ما بيفكرش في حاجة فقط غير الحفاظ على الدولة المصرية لأن إحنا الحجم العمل المطلوب في مصر حجم ضخم جدا وهنربح منه حاجة واحدة أقول لكم هو رضا ربنا ورضاكم عايز أفضل خدام لله وللناس لغاية لما أمشي فربنا يوفقنا Welcome back. As we promised that our second segment is going to be totally dedicated to Upper Egypt and particularly to Isna. Uh, the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities in cooperation with the U.S. Agency for International Development or USAID launched Isna Tourism Promotion Campaign. Well, Isna is filled with touristic sites and uh, Upper Egypt is not only about Thebes or Luxor. It's about Aswan. No, itfu tell al Amarna Isna Tunal Gabal. You are going to find such wonderful places and a monument under each stone here in Egypt. To shed more light on uh, this campaign and to shed more light on the state's um, activities and efforts to promote um, uh, Isna among other um, cities in our um, upper uh, Egypt, in Upper Egypt or in the south of the country. We are very much delighted to have with us our tour guide and also the founder of the campaign Walk Like an Egyptian, Asma Khattab. Asma, a very good morning to you. Good morning, how are you? Let's start immediately with Isna, just to give uh, our, pe our viewers a brief idea about Isna as uh, a place or a city which should have a greater position on our tours map yeah uh, i just came back uh, from uh, luxor in the launching uh, campaign of the tourism campaign of uh, isna and i witnessed myself the uh, huge development that already happened in isna and uh, they showed us also the vision for 2030 for mm -hmm. isna and it's going to be a really huge project that will transform uh, Isna and shed more light on uh, Upper Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, on the traditional night cruise program, Isna is not among the stops. It's only uh, among the Dahabeya, the small boats. Uh, this is because there is only a small part of the temple, which is very beautiful and has been recently um, restored and the color showed Renovated, up. Yeah. Yes, uh, but people think Isna is only that small part of the temple and that's it. Uh, but uh, the project that's working in Isna showed that Isna has much more to show than just the temple of Khnum, uh, known by the temple of uh, This is Isna. what we wanted to know. What are the additions or what I can have in mind when I go to Isna? What I should see? What I should visit? You should do Isna walking tour. Okay. <laughs> you see a different phase and, and face of uh, Isna and, and experience the real Upper Egypt life. The authentic side it's really authentic uh, so we have when you reach isna let's say if you are coming by the habaya you will dock in in isna and you will go to the temple of khnum you'll be impressed by the beautiful colors and the carving of the temple mm -hmm. but before you go into the temple on the right side there is wikala mm -hmm. uh, wikala is a caravan serai which was uh, a trade place for the merchants uh, who used to come with their goods uh, they, it had shops, but also it had rooms, so it was like an hotel for the merchants. Uh, they will be navigating through the Nile to, to go to the Mediterranean later on, so if they are coming from Yemen, for example, or from Africa, Isna was a stop along the way. Mm -hmm. So they will sell their goods in Isna or buy goods from Isna, it depends on, on why they are coming to Isna. 
This building has been recently re uh, restored, renovated. Yeah, renovated and restored, and it was uh, inaugurated uh, by the Minister of uh, Tourism and Antiquity a few months ago. And the, the place is stunning, mm -hmm. like the architecture, the, it's, it's very beautiful, it dates back to the Ottoman period, so it's an old... This uh, was my common question, dating back to, I mean, um, uh, there's such a big difference between the atmosphere of Isna and Luxor and Aswan, for example, or they are complementary, I mean, um, it's a story when every, uh, in every place we can narrate a story. Uh, each city in Upper Egypt in general has a different uh, atmosphere, mm -hmm. uh, different uh, taste, I would say. Uh, so Luxor is very beautiful, but m Luxor mostly is ancient Egypt monuments. Like uh, if you are fascinated with the glory of ancient Egypt and the golden era of Egyptian history, uh, the uh, New Kingdom, then Luxor definitely would be the place to go to, um, to admire all these great temples, the beautiful tombs with the colors. Uh, now in Luxor there are some old buildings, like mm -hmm. I'm talking maybe to early 20th century, but not much. And of course there's beautiful um, rural uh, life on the west side of the Nile in Luxor. Mm -hmm. uh, but Luxor, it has its own beauty. Sure. But Isna, for example, the beauty of Isna, that it has layers of history. Mm -hmm. So not in Isna city, but a uh, little bit to the north of Isna city, there are uh, the ruins of some prehistoric sites. Mm -hmm. uh, and on your way coming from Luxor to Isna, you passed by uh, royal uh, guest houses. Guest houses that was prepared for the family of Muhammad Ali, the last one uh, who passed and stayed in, uh, in those guest houses were King Farouk. Mm -hmm. So we have things from the family of Muhammad Ali. So yeah. it's not only like ancient Egypt or like mm -hmm. prehistoric, but so we have... Things related to modern history. Yeah, to modern history, exactly. Then when you come to Isna uh, city itself, uh, you have the temple, uh, which is ancient Egypt. You have Wukal Tengidde, which is Ottoman. You have the, uh, the uh, uh, minaret, minaret of Al-Amri, which dates back to the Fatimid time, so almost 1,000... So Islamic, Roman, Pharaonic. Yeah, but not only Islamic, like one era of the Islamic, but we have from Fatimi time. This mm -hmm. is like <laughs> one of the oldest. As you've said, uh, layers. Yeah, almost 1,000 years old, beautiful uh, minaret. Mm -hmm. uh, other uh, rooms from the uh, Mamluk uh, uh, time, early 20th century, beautiful buildings with unique architecture that has been uh, renovated and repainted part of this great project happening in Esna. So you really walk and your eyes is cannot stop looking, I look here or look here, you look to the building. So is it a one day trip or um, it deserves just to, it, it deserves more time? I mean, how I can put this onto our map and to give it a time? Well, I would say as a start, uh, for now, one day full, full day trip, mm -hmm. it will be great. Mm -hmm. uh, so you go uh, early in the morning from Luxor to Esna, and you spend the day, you start with a walking tour in the city of Isna. You, uh, you visit Wukalte Gedewi, you see the, uh, the Fatimid the minaret, you walk in the street and you see the old building that has been renovated beautifully. Like it, it's really beautiful with unique architecture. Uh, and in Upper you know, Egypt- You know, I'm asking uh, this question because uh, I really want not only the foreigners to, to visit such places. Yes, but also Egyptians. Egyptians yeah. and walk like Egyptian or <laughs> your campaign. Uh, here, uh, I think it's time to, uh, to let our students, to let our youth, to let our teenagers to know more about their history and to know that Upper Egypt is not only Luxor and Aswan. Other cities should be uh, visited and they really deserve to have our attention. If you please elaborate on that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so in, uh, as I told you, you can... Like for people who love photography uh, or for people who want to experience the real Egypt far from the modern mm -hmm. uh, modernity and like it's really Egyptian. It's really Egyptian walking in Isna. People are very kind yeah. uh, and the streets are very clean as well. Uh, and you see like w with all the renovations that happens and the project happening, it added more beauty. So you, you really walk and enjoy everything. So I, I remember in the, uh, in the event that we had uh, this, uh, this last week, mm -hmm. um, they, uh, because it was not my first time in Isna, I came one year before and I saw already what, what was happening in Isna. So they asked me, what did you really like? What was like the number one highlight for you when you visit Isna? And actually for me, it was, the city walk, like like seeing the um, 
the simple things, like the mix between having history around you, you feel it, I love history and I love the monuments, but it was the, seeing this, um, get like, like he's doing like uh, <laughs> uh, cotton, uh, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and like in a very simple way, mm -hmm. and the people, and they talk to you, and the market. The craftsperson, yes. using your hand, yes, and, and they, do scarves, scarves, and they do scarves, yeah. they do the um, uh, traditional Upper Egypt uh, clothes, they have like the, um, like the vest mm -hmm. that they wear under the galabeya. With pro ray uh, and yes. with the... I mean, this is great, and this is exactly um, uh, what we should say in an exhibition like Tarathona or Our Heritage. Uh, this is to say to the whole world to what extent we are very much proud of uh, our local industries and our, our craftspersons, true? Yeah, and also I, I should also add the food, yeah. because the last year when we went to Esna, uh, we did a, a food stop, someone from the local uh, community uh, made for us uh, a lentil mm -hmm. uh, and it, there is like a special way Esna lentil yeah. uh, which is very delicious and they serve it with uh, Upper Egypt bread which is uh, Reisha Shamsi or mm -hmm. um, some bread, some bread yeah. yes it was like oh my god so delicious so it was like really full experience like you eat unique food like when you eat like Aisha Shamsi with the lentil uh, uh, and you walk in the city and you see the market and you see like things like really you feel like walking back in time you see history and also not only that this like driving from Luxor uh, to Isna the scenery is amazing mm -hmm. like if you really love nature yeah uh, Upper Egypt in general, I will not say Isna only. How much time did it take from Luxor to Isna? Um, it's around 60 kilometers, so like one uh, hour, one hour, one hour, okay. one hour an hour and a half, depending mm. on the speed of the car. Uh, so, you, so it's really a wonderful experience, like from the moment you leave Luxor and the driving, so it's a nice road trip, you really see greenery on, you know, so if you are coming from Luxor, it will be on your left side. There's beautiful greenery with a small mountain on the left, so you are enjoying the view. Mm -hmm. So it's not a boring view, it's a wonderful view. Then you reach Esna and you start Esna City. This is what we call positive energy. If yeah. you want to <laughs> uh, uh, just to gain positive energy, if you want to just feel relaxed and return back uh, fully um, uh, excited for continue our daily life routine, this yes. is going to be such it, a trip. Exactly. So it's, it's a wonderful one day trip. And, and so you walk in the city, then after that, uh, uh, now they are working on the you can go to Isna city on your own but to go to the royal guest house it needs pre-permissions because if someone watching us and mm. <laughs> you need to know you need to uh, arrange permissions in advance but the city itself you can do the walk uh, on your own and enter you can enter the wikela with the same ticket of the temple so it's like easy but like with uh, with the community there maybe you can arrange permissions and you visit the royal guest house which is by the nile so again more nature and relaxed and you feel disconnected with farm around you it's a really wonderful uh, one day uh, trip and um, what I'm really happy about this project that it shows that change can happen in the authentic tourism in, in Upper Egypt mm -hmm. and Isna is not the only uh, city that had richness uh, that has richness there are other potential still waiting for uh, for funds because it needs money step <laughs> by step. Uh, and because the project as i said under every stone we do have a monument we do have something to see to watch to witness and to um, introduce to the world egypt is the gift to humanity in general our cultural heritage is really great and very rich exactly exactly so and because of this i want to ask you about uh, what's going on in uh, governorates like Qina, like Sohag, like Luxor, like uh, in, and in cities like Isna? How do you see the renovation and how do you see such projects which is really going to change our tourism map at large? Uh, well, uh, of course, Luxor is already like a big, big touristic uh, city and uh, with, the, um, uh, with the parade that uh, happened, uh, the Opet uh, parade, they made more uh, renovations in the city like the Cornish and beautiful project so uh, it's already in the right track for Luxor mm. uh, but now uh, I can see also that the government uh, is uh, trying to shed light and to uh, to check what other potentials can uh, can we use so mm -hmm. the there was there were uh, representative uh, from um, the Ministry of uh, Tourism 
uh, an antiquity that were in Luxor uh, a few weeks ago. I don't remember when exactly, but like in, in the last period. And I saw on the Facebook page of uh, the ministry uh, that uh, they went to Suhag. Uh, they and in I, and even in the event last uh, last week, I had I uh, next to me in the bus there was the representative from the Ministry of Tourism, and she told me uh, that she was accompanying uh, people from the ministry to uh, Naga Hamedi in Ena because mm -hmm. they are they were checking what can we do. Mm -hmm. So this is. It's the first step, which means Moro will follow later and maybe we'll see more positive examples like what happened in Isna. Mm -hmm. So uh, now they are checking what can they do mm -hmm. uh, to bring light to, uh, to Kena uh, and uh, Suheg. Mm -hmm. Kena as a government, like I, I always say, Kena government mm -hmm. and Suheg government are the new Luxor and Aswan. Mm -hmm. This is from my point of view. Uh, because like 100 years ago, like, there were potentials in Luxor and Aswan. People start working on making tourism there. Cruises started to navigate between the two. And with the time, they became famous. You go and visit Luxor and Aswan, you do the cruise. Mm -hmm. Also, Kena is really for not only Kena city, but the, the whole government. And it's, there are lots of uh, stops along the way. So heck, the same thing. So it can be a new potential of a new cruise navigating only between the two of them. In the future, it, it can be something like that. And also in Kena, we have, of course, Dandara temple. Like mm. <laughs> There is no doubt on the beauty of this uh, temple, but it's not only the temple, even... You have one minute? Yeah, sure. Uh, so it's, it's everything. Dandara city itself, it has beautiful uh, architecture, the people, uh, their crafts and you know, everything. Asma, if we started <laughs> to speak about Upper Egypt and about our <laughs> tourism map and about our monuments, we need uh, episodes and episodes called This is Endless Beauty. Asma yeah. Khattab, our, our uh, tour guide and the founder of this wonderful campaign, Walk Like an Egyptian. Thank you very much for your input. Have a very good day. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, by this, we come to the end of this episode of our breakfast show. Stay tuned on Line TV International Almost for more updates. And for more details, please log on to www.malinternational.net. Many thanks for watching. This was Nirmina Brahma.